So the polar curves we are, we are looking at are of equation r equal f of theta. And the slope of the tangent in the xy plane is still the rate of change of the y coordinate with respect to the x coordinate, so dy over dx. And because we are in polar coordinate, in the polar coordinates associated with the uh, Cartesian coordinates x, y, we know that x is r cosine y and y is r sine theta. I'm sorry, x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. And therefore, we can express x and y as functions of theta because we are along the curve where r is expressed as a function of theta, so we can plug that in. Now we want to calculate dy over dx and we can use the chain rule to calculate this rate of change of y with respect to x as the rate of change of y with respect to theta multiplied by the rate of change of theta with respect to x. This later one, d theta over dx, is really the reciprocal of the rate of change of x with respect to theta. So what we have is really the quotient of the derivative of y with respect to theta with the derivative of x with respect to theta. And this we can calculate because we have x and y as functions of theta and specifically as product functions. So we can use the product rule to calculate each one of these derivatives. For the derivative of y, we get derivative of f times sine plus f times cosine. And for the derivative of x, we get derivative of f times cosine minus, derivative of, uh, minus f times sine because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And that's assuming here that the bottom is not zero. So that means that when we are at the pole in particular, then that means r is zero, in other words, f of theta is zero. So in the expression we have above, the uh, second terms in the top and in the bottom are both zero because f of theta is zero. And we end up with uh, our ratio being just f prime of theta sine of theta divided by f prime of theta cosine of theta. And assuming that f prime is not zero, this is really just tangent of theta. That means that if we go back to the pole for a particular value of the parameter theta, then the tangent is going to have slope tangent of that angle theta. So in other words, uh, this tangent line is really going to be uh, the line that points in the direction theta and goes through the origin. The condition that f prime of theta is not zero is not really important because um, if it is, well, we look at the limit as theta is approaching zero, and as in, in the limit, we're still going to be able to simplify f prime of theta divided by. Uh, we we're still going to be able to simplify simplify by f prime of theta, and therefore we're still going to have a tangent of the angle. So now that means that uh, if for a particular value of the parameter, say theta zero for that particular angle, if r is zero, in other words, if I'm back at the pole, then the tangent at the pole for that angle is the line theta equal theta zero. Because of course, um, this line has slope tangent of theta zero. So that will be, give us an easy way to know what the tangent line is when we go back through the pole. So in particular, this is what it looks like, right? the um, red curve uh, would be our polar curves that we're looking at and um, the tangent line would look like the blue curve as uh, theta is approaching theta zero where theta zero is a value of the angle where the point on the curve is at the pole. So going back to our curve r equals sine of 2 theta, we can clarify the situation of the tangents. In particular, uh, if I look at the case where theta equals 0, I'm at the pole, that means the line theta equals 0, which is uh, pointing in the, positive, in the direction of the positive x-axis, um, but regardless of the orientation, theta equals 0 is the x-axis, and this is a tangent line at that point. So here we have a half tangent. If I look at what happens for theta equal pi over 4, I am at that point. And if I want to look at the slope of the tangent, I can now make some calculations. Um, dy over dx is uh, really just the derivative of my function sine 2 theta. So that's 2 cosine 2 theta 
times sine theta plus my function sine two theta times cosine theta and I divide that by the derivative two cosine two theta times cosine theta minus the function sine two theta times sine theta. Okay, and here you see that if we plug pi over four in this, um, two pi over four is pi over two, so the cosine is zero, so the first term is zero. And then for the second term, uh, the sine is one and the cosine is root two over two. Similarly, at the bottom, the first term is zero and the second term is negative root two over two, so we obtain negative one for the quotient. So the tangent line is the line of slope negative one, and that means it look, looks like that is in fact perpendicular to the radius um, and therefore tangent to the unit circle. If I go to uh, the value of the angle pi over two here, uh, again I'm going back to the pole and therefore theta equal pi over two, which is a y-axis, is tangent to the curve. So I'm going back with a vertical tangent. And I could go around and check all, all of the um, tangent lines, but here you understand the principle. Smoothing things out, this is what we would get. Let, let's turn to a second example. Now we want to sketch the polar curve r equal 1 minus cosine of theta. And we're going to proceed pretty much the same way as in the previous example except that instead of really sketching the graph r equal 1 minus cosine of theta in the Cartesian coordinates theta r, we're just going to look at the variations of the function r as a function of theta, which is pretty much all we used in the previous example, um, as you could tell then. So the derivative of the function r as a function of theta is sine of theta, which is going to be non-negative on the interval 0 pi, and negative on pi 2 pi. So what that means in terms of the variation of the functions, uh, the derivative is 0 for angle 0 pi or 2 pi because the derivative is just a sine function. It is positive from 0 to pi, negative from pi to 2 pi. So in terms of variations of the function r, that means that the function is increasing on 0 pi, decreasing on pi 2 pi. And of course, uh, we want to know the value of r at 0, pi, and 2 pi. When we plug 0 or 2 pi in the function r, then we get 1 for the cosine, and therefore 0 for r, because it's 1 minus cosine. And at pi, cosine is negative 1, so r is 1 minus negative 1, 2. So the maximal value for r, which will be the uh, largest distance we are from the pole, is going to be 2. And interesting other values are for theta equal pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 because they correspond to intersections of the curve with the y-axis. When we point in those directions, we point in the direction of the either positive or negative y-axis. For both values, when we plug that in r, the cosine is 0, so r is 1. So now we look at what this is going to mean uh, in polar coordinates in the plane. Let's start with theta equals 0. Then r is 0, that means we are at the pole, and the derivative uh, is also 0, the derivative of r, which um, uh, gives us a 0 over 0 in the formula we had for the slope of the tangent line. But if we look at just the limit as uh, theta is approaching zero, we just get the limit of the tangent function at zero, which is zero. So there is really uh, no problem with the fact that r prime is zero for that angle. But what that means is uh, when we are at the pole for the angle zero, we have a tangent pointing uh, in the direction of the uh, positive x-axis. Specifically, the x-axis is a tangent. So now what happens when theta increases from 0 to pi over 2? You see that r is going to increase from 0 to 1. So that means that as the direction in which we look turns from 0 to pi over 2, the distance from the pole increases from 0 to 1. So as the blue line is going to, um, to turn, 
the red point is going to move along that um, blue airfray away from the pool and trace out the corresponding part of the polar curve up to the point where we arrive, uh, where we point in the direction theta is pi, pi over 2 and then the distance to the pole is 1. We might ask uh, what is the tangent line at that point to get a better graph and now we know how to do that. Uh, we can calculate dy over dx with the formula r prime sine theta plus r cosine theta divided by r prime cosine minus r sine and evaluate that as theta equal pi over 2. When theta equal pi over 2, the cosine is 0, so we get some of the terms that are 0. We end up with just r prime sine divided by negative r sine. The sine cancels out. We end up with r prime divided by negative r at pi over 2. But r prime is sine theta, so at pi over 2 it's 1. And r is 1 minus cosine, so at uh, pi over 2 it's also 1. In other words, we get 1 over negative 1, so the slope of the tangent line at that point is negative 1. So it looks like that. Now what happens as we continue uh, to increase the angle from pi over 2 to pi? So our blue half ray is going to continue to turn uh, in the direction of the negative y-axis. And r, which is the distance to the pole, is going to increase from 1 to 2, where 2 is the furthest point away. So again... Uh, we're going to trace out the polar curve by following this red dot that uh, is going to move away from the pole as uh, the blue half ray turns. And we trace out this, uh, this part of the curve. Again, we may ask what is the tangent line at that particular point. And um, if we look at the values for theta equal pi, then sine is 0, so that term is going to be 0. Cosine is negative 1, and uh, r is 2, so we get negative 2. As I said, cosine is negative 1, and r prime is 0, so that term is 0. And here, um, sine is 0, so we get 0 as well. Therefore, uh, we have something non-zero divided by zero, so we get a vertical tangent. Okay. Now you see that I traced out directly the um, second half of the curve um, with even the uh, particular tangent uh, at the point corresponding to 3 pi over 2 and I traced it out by symmetry about the x-axis. We could just continue to follow what happens from pi to 3 pi over 2 and then from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi and things would work out just the same way as what we have discussed. We can do that by symmetry uh, because if I plug negative theta uh, in my curve then I get 1 minus cosine of negative theta but cosine negative theta is the same as cosine theta so I obtain the same as r of theta. If you think of what that means, if you point in the direction theta and look at the point on the curve corresponding to that, then you have a point at the same distance on the curve but on the half ray pointing in the direction negative theta. While pointing in the direction theta or in the direction negative theta corresponds to taking a reflection about the x-axis and we go at the same distance so that means that the curve admits a symmetry with respect to the x-axis and this is exactly what I use to trace the second half of the curve yeah here I wrote symmetry with respect to the y-axis it should be with respect to the x-axis now if we smooth things out this is what we get and this is um, our polar curve r equal 1 minus cosine theta 